but yeah, basically what he was saying, um, be respectful. Dude, we're literally just talking about a game, right? Um, and two different kind of opinions on it. My opinion is what I feel healthy for the game. And I'm assuming his opinion is what he feels is healthy for the game. Overall, we just want this game to be better. And we think that it has potential to be a lot better than what it is. That's literally it, all right? Um, and obviously, be respectful, all that kind of stuff. We're just two people who stream a freaking game, right? All right, one sec. I need to turn you up still. Uh, all right. Okay, how is that? How is that? Is that better when he said all right? I put him to 150%. Alright, uh, say something, just so I can see how the uh, the sound is. Um, hello, hello. How's right. it going? How was that? Better? Alright, cool. Sorted everything. Alright, you are already sounding perfect, <clears throat> so good job. You, your audio is just apparently pristine already. <laughs> just ready for it, yeah. Are, are, we, are we kicking it off officially then? Yeah, let's kick it off officially. Alright, <laughs> let me find my... You know, my little body starter. Uh, honestly, super, super excited to be here and chatting with you. Uh, okay. Some people wanted us to meet in like some parking lot and just beat each other up. Right. And I, I don't know, like, I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I think us streamers, we see how transparent these things are and how people just want to fan the flames. And I like I, to I, think that we're above it. Yeah, like, it's literally just two opinions on a game. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't really see the uh, animosity and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, honestly, I think that that out of the way, everything else is going to be a lot nicer. Because if there was anything personal, I, that would be very sad and very ugly. I don't know why they would be. I don't even know you. Uh, you know, <laughs> that, 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 that doesn't matter, dude. Like, someone watches me for five minutes and someone watches you for ten minutes. And they already think that, you know, they know everything about us. They yeah. understand, you know, they, they want to white knight for me. They want to protect yeah, yeah, yeah. your honor as if you mm -hmm. were some, you know, helpless uh, little damsel. And mm -hmm. these ugly things happen. And yeah. I don't know if I, I can I, speak on, on your behalf, but we don't no, want No, no. I've, I've definitely seen that. I think a lot of uh, DVD community like drama, honestly. I think they like oh, to, I, like, push it. I don't. I don't think that's like an exclusive feature of DVD. I think that's like everywhere. Yeah, but that's true. It's, that's it's, true. It is. It is a lot of immaturity that you know shows up in, at times like this. Yeah. So, what do you think about the idea of going from like the broader terms of like general balance in the game and then getting to the specifics? Does that seem like a good idea to you? Sure, man. As I said, I'm. I'm just jumping in, and whatever you talk about, we'll talk about. All right. So, the current state of the game, when it comes to balance, mm -hmm. is it tilted? heavily towards the killer side is it definitely on the survivor side depends is it win it, it, uh, like it, obviously we're gonna say it depends obviously but yeah where would you say you stand in general because the impression i have from watching your stuff you know every now and then is that you seem to think that and perhaps i'm misrepresenting you so you know go go on but you seem to think that if played at, a, at the highest level survivors mm -hmm. are just unstoppable and mm -hmm. killer is basically you know, helpless. So I would really like to, to have your take on this one. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the tournaments show it. Um, as long as, and it, it isn't just the tournaments, just looking at the variables, looking at how fast mm -hmm. gen speed can be. Um, right. When you see the tournaments, I mean, you can see the killers in the tournaments. Like you can mm -hmm. see that they don't believe that they can go out and get these hooks, right? They, mm -hmm. they get one person and they're like, right, I can't continue to chase because if I do that, the gens are just going to fly. So I'm going to try and get one person out of the game so there's less people on gens. And then I'm going to maybe get another. And then maybe if I've just done that quick enough, I might get one, like a third at best with maybe no ed. And that's kind of the best yeah. players. That's like the best killers who should be ultra confident. That's how they're thinking. So if you're right. thinking that way, they must feel that it must be in the survivor's uh, favor. Because if it wasn't, they just go out. Mm -hmm. They go out and go for all the chases, right? Um, I I think we're we're not painting the whole picture. Like you you haven't said anything wrong. There's definitely tournaments where a killer will wrap up one chase, get that person on the hook, and then realize, okay, I've lost basically three generators right now. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm gonna, yeah. have to, I'm gonna have to do damage control 
and I'm gonna have to camp this person to death. And even that doesn't work sometimes because there's perks like decisive, camaraderie, which is popular in tournaments. Um, borrow time. And well, so well on. So, they will hook trade though. So at yes. worst case scenario, they'll just get free hooks mm -hmm. given to them. It's not interesting. Uh, but there are, there are there are also tournaments that are entirely based around hooks, and in tournaments like this, um, hooks escape gems completed. You do you do not have such an incentive to camp it out. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And how do you how do you feel? Um, this translates to the actual numbers of the game at large outside of tournaments, because we could be talking about tournaments, but we know that it's a very minuscule part of of the player base and the community. Always is and... though. Sorry. It it always is really the the top percent, the people who play right. the game at the best, usually is the the lower percentage. All right, so how would you feel like, okay, you, you're basically, if I understand that correctly, is uh, so hours are so strong that you can immediately tell by looking at the top levels in tournaments that the killers are conditioned to just get a few hooks and um, and that shows that so hours are very strong. How do you feel about general, you know, general matches in the overall game outside of competitive? Do you, you mean... Think it's the same? Well, I think the matchmaking is a mess. So you mostly, especially with all the newcomers, you're mostly going against people who aren't playing that efficient. So you can go for these 12 hooks and stuff like that. Right, but how do you, how do you explain then the, the disparity between, between this idea that survivors have it really easy and the killer has to basically try the hardest to get one kill, maybe secure two? With the fact that if we if we look at the statistics, killers, even like the lowest killers, get two kills per, per game. And some of them get more. Like well, this... Freddy, for example, has an has an average of like 66%, like across the game, not even mm -hmm. like rank one or anything where I think it can, it can go higher. But basically, any Freddy, like the average Freddy will go into a game and he will kill two out of every three survivors. So how, how do average. you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. On average, of course. Um, how do you, how do you think, what do you think explains the difference between what you're saying and what happens in the game? Is it just because the survivors are bad or what's going on? Uh, well, because of averages, we all know when you are new to this game, the killer dominates and there's more people who are new to the game. So just thinking about it logically, you know, there's going to be more four mans at the lower end and that's just going to push into the higher end. Even at rank one, even at rank one, you still have very chill people because it's so easy to rank up. Okay. Uh, I, I still don't don't see the connection though. You're saying that when you're new to the game, the killer dominates. Well, yeah. Like if you don't play this game very efficiently, the, the killer will dominate, yeah. But, but killers, like if you look at the statistics... Of, the statistics like, say nurse has the least where... kills. <laughs> Sorry? The statistics say Nurse is the worst killer. She has the least kills. But, like... <laughs> exactly, then. Like, are we going to say that... Um, we... Like, how, how do you how do you want to go about this, exactly? If we... If we... Are we going to balance the game around the general experience? Or are we going to balance the game around the statistics? What do you think? Like, I think do you want to go for like the top percentage, um, the top percentage uh, competitive tournament level players, or do you want to um, keep the balance in a way that, on average, the overall population of the game has something going for them? I think ideally you want to balance for the people who are playing the game well, but mm -hmm. by doing that you don't want to hurt the people who are playing it badly. You can do things like that. Let, let's just say like one example. Mm -hmm. You could change a tile, right? You could change a right. tile where only good players would take advantage of and bad players wouldn't. It would only yeah. impact good players and it wouldn't do anything to bad players. That's just one example. So ideally, you want to balance for the people who know what they're doing, which doesn't impact the people who don't. That's the ideal balance that you want. And that's what most games try to do, I feel. Uh, but I honestly feel like that is exactly kind of what this game does. There are so many buildings and so many structures in Dead by Daylight. Would I know that a survivor with 5,000 hours can run me there five minutes? Can that's... run me there five minutes if they want to. Yeah, that, that's, and, and, that's... And a baby survivor will go down in 10 seconds after like a quick mind game. So exactly. that's, ex in a way, that's exactly what the game already has. 
and, no, no, and no. yet we're still complaining. No, no, no. That, Wouldn't no, you say so? No, no. You're, you're saying what it doesn't have. You're saying um, that these loops have two mm -hmm. massive differences. You're saying that a bad player will go down at it and a good player will uh, keep at it for like five minutes or whatever. What I'm saying is mm -hmm. you change it where the good player doesn't stay there for five minutes. They stay there for a good... You want it... This okay. is got the kind of a bit of a tangent. This is going to tiles. This was just an example. But you want it where there's gameplay for both the killer and survivor at high level and low level. At low level, there'll always be gameplay for killer and survivor because they don't know what they're doing. But at high level, you're going to start losing that with god pallets and things like that because there's no gameplay. There's no gameplay for the uh, the killer. But this is a bit of a tangent. It was just one example I'm saying where you want to balance for the higher level without impacting the lower level. Like, I, I understand that, and I understand how you're skeptical of statistics, and I mm. think I'm, I'm on you with that, but we do still need to, to look at them. Because, like, you, you can just look at statistics in your own games, for example. How do you feel this game should be balanced around so that you had an average of, uh, of two kills? Do you think that would ever happen? That this game could be balanced in such a way that you would have an average of two kills? Would you want that? I wouldn't base it on kills. There's, there's too many variables. I'd base it on hooks. Uh, okay. I so think I'll... I think if you push this game where the incentive mm -hmm. is hooks, I think this this is literally my stance. If okay. you push this game where it's all about hooks, not the kills, I think it goes in a healthy direction, a healthier direction. Uh, I think that we'll need to talk about that kind of separately. Okay. Uh, and maybe maybe it's a good time now to to dive into it. Yeah. Uh, because we're, we're kind of switching topics. Mm -hmm. um, but before maybe we talk about the hooks and the kills, um, how do you feel about gen speeds in general? Do you think this is entirely... What we've been talking about now, is it more about tiles? Is it more about gen speeds? How do you feel the gen speeds are in the game right now? Gen speeds is a hard, it's a hard one because is it the speed? Is it regression? Is it the map size? It's something. Obviously, we know mm -hmm. that gen speeds are too quick but we don't know why we don't know if it's because it's 80 seconds we don't know if it's because of the uh the slowdown we don't know if it's the early game you know we don't know uh, we, we don't know exactly why but we do know that you can as a killer down people very quickly and all five gens will be done before you can hook everyone like they, they will be even if you are down in them and they are doing everything wrong at every loop you they can do them gens if they glue to them and that's when, that's kind of problematic, right? Well, uh, yeah, but like I, I think that's kind of dodging. Like, uh, like you're basically just saying this is a very complex question. It is. Uh, and I'm asking you, do you think the gen? If it was up to you, let's say your DVD dev tomorrow, would you immediately change uh, gen speeds? That's what I'm what I'm trying to get at. I would. I would play. I would play around with uh, PTBs and gather statistics from them PTBs by doing different things like, you know, maybe a map size change, maybe an early game collapse as they did mention they were going to do, see what that does. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe when the killer kicks a gen, it regresses at 200% and people get confused by this. 200% of normal regression. So that would be half of a solo survivor, just so people know. Because some, some people think like, well, regresses two times faster than a survivor. Like, no, that's not what 200% is. Um, so yeah, half a survivor, you know, things like this. You gather I, data. I, I honestly think that that particular idea of like adding regression, because you did make a tweet some time ago. I'm sorry if I'm hijacking the conversation right now. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, uh, maybe suggesting that a built-in ruin would help the game. Yeah, but the, but the, but the could thing... You, could, you, could, you, could you explain that to me? So this is something which will obviously be controversial, I feel. Um, okay. You're obviously not talking just, okay, just take the current ruin and slap it default on every killer. That's not what you're saying. No, no, right. So the idea, right. So I'm. this is just one idea. Like this okay. isn't the idea, as I've said, right. like the kick okay, in the okay, gen okay. is, the kick in the gen is another idea. This is one of the mm -hmm. more controversial ones, which people will just be like, well, what the hell? Um, but whatever, it's, the, it's just, just the same as the other ideas I said. But if you want to talk about this, sure. Um, so this idea is how do we incentivize killers to get away from hooks? Why do like why would a killer go away from a hook uh, when they can stay there and get a kill? Right. So the whole this is the whole idea. It isn't just one thing. So the idea is, and obviously this probably won't happen, but okay. it's, it's just when I'm kind of throwing I, shit out I, there. I, I, just, I just want to understand that it. it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, what happens if there were no progression on hook? So the killer standing there gets nothing, but. The killer moving to gens 
actually gets regression by pushing them away, incentive to move away from the hook, and gets rewarded. That's the, that's the idea. Uh, I'm not saying it needs to be put okay. straight into the game or whatever, but that, so, in my so opinion... May, so maybe make the survivor timer on the hook, not one minute, but like a very long yes! time. Uh, or, or an indefinite yeah! time. And then add in like a golden drone. But, no, but like, if, you, if, they don't even need a time limit. Like, they could have it where if the killer stands there, it's never yes. going to go down. And All then right. you could say, well, then survivors could run around there. Yeah, then he gets them. And then he hooks them. They're running from his face. Like, my whole thing is, when I play Survivor, right. I really enjoy chase, right? I really enjoy getting mm -hmm. chased and stuff. When I go against one of these killers who's, like, trying to just uh, get kills, it's mm -hmm. so boring. I'm either slugged, one-hooked, two-hooked. I can see that they're waiting. Like, they, there's, like, a Survivor on a hook who's got, like you know, 30 seconds until the next stage. So they'll hover around there just for that 30 mm -hmm. seconds to get them. Mm -hmm. It's just- Yeah, because they're not, they're not confident they can go out and do exactly. something better across and, the map. And, and, and the game doesn't give them that confidence because if you do push someone away from a gen, you don't have yeah. ruin or something, that gen's gonna yeah. be done anyway. Like you, you can push them away for like 10 seconds. That gen will be done in like two seconds. Like yeah, by another solo. It's very strange. While I agree with that point, I think the suggestion of adding some kind of built-in ruin would actually hurt this idea it would actually make it easier for killers to hover around like picture this okay yeah yeah uh i down a clavette i put her between a few gens and now i have built-in ruin even if it's weaker than current ruin what am i gonna do i'm just gonna stay there and just scare survivors of gens a little bit while i camp and now the gens are slowly going down and it's gonna benefit me like i'm gonna slug another guy i'm gonna leave him on the ground i'm gonna slug another guy i'm gonna leave him on the ground i'm gonna chase the other guy away from unbreakable and just you know waste time and stall because I know the gens are slowly regressing in the background. Uh, in fact, in tournaments, the best time to, uh, you know, when, when survivors and killers are playing really, really hard for the win, the best times to camp people is when you have ruin up. Because someone comes for the rescue, you slap them away, now they have to heal, now someone else who was on a gen needs to come, and then they let go of a gen as well, so now you have every gen slowly regressing. So, like, while I agree that we should incentivize um killers for like to get away from hooks and that's a great idea i, I think the the idea of a built-in ring would actually completely hurts hurts this concept because mm. it's just literally rewarding you for stalling the survivors rather than actually sealing the deal now uh, like an alternative idea would be to maybe give a default pop goes the weasel because for you to activate a pop you need to actually go there so you can nerf pop and add in a, a base five or ten percent or whatever to a normal kick after a hook say and then after a hook for 45 seconds your next kick this is a default thing will hurt 10 percent of a generator and what pop does it simply turns that from 20 to 25 or, or sorry for 10 mm -hmm. to 20 or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. i get that uh, so I, I think you know when you say um, oh, let's make a baseline ruin. Like, lots of people immediately dismiss it because they're like, okay, you, yeah, buff killers, blah, blah, blah. They don't <laughs> want to listen to any details. Yep. And, and maybe some other people also don't like it because it encourages the killer to just stall and, and have the gen regress. And I'm sure you've been in these games where the killer knows they have ruin, they slug you, they keep an eye on the they, they keep someone on the hook, and they just play really, really scummy, not really chasing, not really doing anything, just being a territorial uh, creature around the hook. And just having the game slowly go their way. So, but but okay. what happens if the game starts rewarding hooks as well as that? So doing that slugging technique, right. if you were to do that, even though, you know, they can crawl away and you can't keep picking them up. Like eventually right. they're going to wiggle off and get away anyway. So there is counterplay to that in general anyway. Um, even okay. like that's an extreme as well. Like that's like the most you could abuse it. And even with that, um, Oh shit, <laughs> I've lost, lost Rain of Fault. Where was I? Don't worry, take your time. <laughs> um, you were saying, what if the what if the killers are rewarded for hooking? Oh yeah, even with that, uh, that will only net you a few hooks. So if you are rewarded with hooks, right. then you're not going to want to do that because you won't get many of them. So you're more incentivized once again to push. But as I said, that idea with the kick you said, like okay. I said that, like the kick thing, like this ruin idea, it's just one idea. The yeah. whole thing is is coming up with ideas which um solve the most uninteresting thing with the game you know like with tournaments and stuff when it when it, especially yeah. when it's with kills that is not a good light to put dbd in like the game could be way more interesting to watch 
way more interesting. I, I, I do, I do feel honestly that too. You should, um, you do should that watch tournament. more tournaments. Oh, okay. Because I, I feel like there are some of them that you would generally not say this about. Because I do, I have seen a bunch of tournaments. Now, uh, unfortunately, the tournament community in DVD is like beyond tiny. Mm -hmm. So you know, I don't blame anyone for not being in the know, and I myself don't watch all of them, but th 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 there's a lot of interesting strategies, strategies that go on. There's games where there's tons of hooks, there's rule sets that are very well made to encourage, you know, back and forth. All the rules have holes, you know, if you incentivize uh, hooks, then survivors never trade, and then they just, you know, do gens and escape. If you incentivize kills, then, you know, everything has a, down a downside to it. And almost any tournament I've seen, the rules have at least one thing about them that kind of sucks. Hmm. But that's that's the name of the game. Uh, one thing that I do have an issue with, uh, and we're probably just getting more into the hooks versus kills of it, hmm. is that it's not really you that controls the amount of hooks that survivors uh, give you. It's usually mostly them. Like, if we're going to make a game revolve around hooks, you gotta realize that survivors are the ones that are in control. You can have a game with four survivors where one of them never shows up. Never, ever, ever shows up. They are always with spine shield hiding in a corner. They will be the last one to die if you ever find them and they don't get a hatch. And then there's a guy that will just kill himself on the second hook. And then there's a guy that will just, you know, disconnect and refuse to participate. There are so, like, when I tried to play for hooks that one day, mm -hmm. like going with your mindset of like, okay, you know, let's go for 12 hooks as possible. If not, well, too bad. I realized just how how badly survivors don't all, don't actually want to play the game like that sometimes. I would have people right off the hook chase me because they have BT and they have DS and it's like, oh, come on, come on, get me, come on, come on, get me. But, but can and, I say, like, yeah, go ahead. You, you talk about people hiding and all these things, but that's very inefficient. So if people are doing that, you go after everyone else and well, eventually yeah, you're going to find like, that person th th and you're going to get a lot it. of hooks overall. For, for the game to be more balanced and more fun, and for your idea of like reward and hooks, the killer would need to be rewarded for hooking survivors, right? Mm -hmm. So we would shift from a meta of what, what what do the survivors do now in general? Do gens as fast as possible, use second chance perks, any of them they have to extend chase as much as possible, mm -hmm. use second chance perks to trade up hooks, and then, <laughs> and then, yeah, exactly, and then get the hell out. Yeah. If the killer had a speed boost for hooking all the survivors once, for example, then the new strategy would be to have one survivor never, ever, ever, uh, you know, be found. And if mm. the game was balanced around multiple hooks, what you would have, I'm not joking, you would have people with deliverance waiting for 59 seconds and then unhooking themselves. And people with camaraderie just hanging 94 seconds on the hook. Like, I feel like people would develop strategies to <laughs> not give you that. And it would just be the natural progression of the game. And then we would complain about, you know, about that instead. So, with, I, with, I, I with, do... with the deliverance, though, I don't know why that doesn't give you a, a hook. You could still hook them again. Uh, so I don't, oh, I don't no. understand. Mm -hmm. No, uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we would go from trying to stay alive uh, at all costs and do gens as quickly as possible and, and prolong chases as, as much as possible. We would go from that to, okay, what does the killer get for hooking? What kind of reward does he get? How do we play around that and give him the least amount? You know, like like you, you would have a, a Dwight that gets uh, unhooked by a Claudette, and then the Dwight would not want you to hook the Claudette. Instead, he would take a hit with BT. He would take another hit for the Claudette. He, you know, he would make you with his DS. We would we would switch to but to this other to this other mentality. And mm -hmm. if you're like, oh well, all the hooks are treated equally. All the hooks, like every time you hook uh, a survivor, we're gonna slow on the game a bit, so the killer. Then it would be a matter of how much you can get away with, because mm. if getting multiple hooks slows down the game for you, then the strategy is gonna be to to immediately try to rehook survivors as as much as you can. So mm. you would also have killers that are just gonna be like, okay, this guy got on hook, I'm gonna tunnel him immediately, and I'm gonna put him back on. He doesn't have, there's no obsession, there's no BS. Let's just hook immediately again. Mm -hmm. um, but what one thing though, you are using extreme, which is completely fine. You can, mm -hmm. but you can also do okay. that for kills, um, okay. which would obviously just be slugging everyone into a one hook. And I genuinely right. think the worst case scenario of the hooks, the most extreme of the hooks, would still be more interesting than one hooking everyone into a four K, which is the extreme, like face camping, bubba, right? 
Right. Yeah, I I completely understand that. Mm -hmm. Ideally, then, what would your reward be for hooking multiple survivors and staying away from them? Because we know that the rank system right now, uh, at least in th in 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 theory, punishes you for staying close to hooks. Mm -hmm. If there's no one nearby and you're just standing there, you're gonna lose quote unquote pip points or whatever you wanna mm -hmm. call them. That I don't know if you agree, but that in my experience means absolutely nothing. No. If a kill well, the pip. camp, they will camp. Oh. Right. Um, uh, I I I think the emblem system's idea is actually mm -hmm. good. I think the execution of it is terrible, but I think I, I, do, I think I, the I do, idea. I do, I do I do agree to to a degree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I do think the idea to incentivize positive, healthy gameplay. You know, uh, survivors need to go for hooks to help the teammates out. Uh, killers need to go for chases, getting downs, getting multiple mm -hmm. hooks once again. Very good uh, idea. Uh, but the the kind of execution of it is very flawed. They need to look into a lot of different things uh, with that. Also, uh, well, I guess that's moving on to the MMR thing as well. Like, whenever we do. Uh, I, I find it complicated because it's, it's kind of strange that both sides could win. Because you could theoretically have a game, I suppose, where, you know, the, the, the survivors do all pretty good and they all pip up or get mm -hmm. good emblem points and the killer does pretty good mm -hmm. and he also uh, ranks up yeah I, so... I don't find that strange <laughs> it's an oh, asymmetrical okay. i don't find it strange uh, the whole like all the survivors and all killers win if they all play well like i don't find that strange at all uh, i i do think it is strange because as you said we're moving into an mmr system so would that be counting as a tie of sorts no you just move up in well wait Hmm. Yeah, ima imagine this is like chess where you have an LO rating. Maybe right. it's one that's hidden so that you don't know exactly where you're if you sitting. Both up, win you both win with idea. MMR. Would you, would you like, if you have a game like this, would you. I guess it'd be a draw, wouldn't it? If you all won. It is weird. It's an asymmetrical, man. It's an asymmetrical, it, but, and they put in also, MMR into it. It's also weird it. for the individual survivors because hmm. you, could, you could die very early to protect your team, and the game would think that you're doing relatively bad mm -hmm. but maybe that sacrifice you did let everyone else escape you know mm. so it's a hard like, one this would also, it's, it's this a would be hard one. For, for the individual survivors for killers okay there's only one uh person mm -hmm. but th there's also games where I, I don't know if you've seen this but of course you have you you basically carry the entire team they do maybe fuck nothing but because they do a totem here and there they escape with way more points then you and you are the only one dying, even though you probably single-handedly save the entire team. Uh, how how does the game deal with that? I wonder. You run about a chase, um, like say say if someone did a really big chase and they just did gens uh, and then got yeah, out. Yeah, it, it could it yeah. could be a chase, but it could be something else. Maybe you just did a really good save, or maybe you just did the gens when they're like you did something. I guess you could do just like off the top of my head. I, I guess you could do something where let's say if you're on chase, mm -hmm. you get kind of a percentage of what your team is doing. Right. And that could maybe balance it out. So even if you die in chase, you're going to get loads of chase points. And right. you're going to get a percentage of what your team did. Like, that's just literally off the top of my head. But that seems like it could be an all right direction. It's like a whole day. But, but the thing is, we're talking about like redesigning everything. Right. I, don't, I don't even know if the devs would like, listen to any of this. I mean, it'd be cool if they did. But and Another thing I wanted to run by you is if the killer's objective is to kill. And some people, you know, swear by that and live by that. Um, how, how do you reconcile that with the fact that you could have like eight hooks and, and no kills in a game? How, how would you feel about that? Would you I say, see. well, I did pretty good, even though the game's not really giving me kills, or...? Uh, just say that first part again. I was just looking at chat for a second, because mm -hmm. they, said, they said something regarding the uh, the percentage. There is a bit of that in the game, but it'd probably be a higher percentage to that person say that. Sorry, man. Say, say, say that first part again. I just got distracted. Right. Uh, no, so the, the, the point I'm trying to... Uh, to get it here, right? Is that let's say that I'm playing with um, I'm playing with my friends, all right? We're in a mm -hmm. tournament, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, the rule. Let's let's now get into the specific rules. We're in a tournament, and I want my team to do well. And I realize that my teammate is dead on hook. Mm -hmm. So I go and I take chase for him. And now you get me. Let's say you're playing killer, and you hook me, mm -hmm. and then you hook me again, and then then my other teammate realizes that i'm there on hook so they come and now you mm -hmm. hook them you hook them again and then, right. then the other teammate comes we have basically just juggled you into wasting your time not getting anyone out of the game and we are all going to escape eventually well a lot of people do that 
A lot do right. that. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that this is a skill of the survivors as well? Of strategically sacrificing their hook states so that you do not finish someone off? Because this is something that really, when I played competitive and I practiced with my team and so on, one of the mm. things that really blew me away was how willing they were to just go down. Like, I would have a guy dead on hook, right? And I'd be yeah. like, okay, this, this guy's dead. And if I kill him, then the rest of the team can maybe uh, eventually fall. And then suddenly, yeah. out of nowhere, comes a teammate that I've never hooked. And they are 100% willing to go down for him. Mm. So in a game like that, you could get one kill, you could, get, you could get nine hooks. But I would argue that these survivors actually played spectacularly well. And that maybe you did really well in chases because they allow you or not or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe you did really well in chases and did a lot of chases, but you didn't have the initiative and you didn't have the, the insight to be like, wait a minute, they're literally toying with me. Mm -hmm. they're, let, they're, they're letting me get multiple hooks here so that I don't finish what I should finish and go on to maybe win the game big time, right? Mm -hmm. You, could, you so, could obviously just ignore them though if you were going for kills. That's right. not so easy. That's that's the craziest part because if you think about it, if you have a a, a game a gen that, uh, a game that's already pretty tight, you know, where the gens are taken, you need that down for that pop, and you need that down for that hook, and and you need someone killed, or else the game is getting out of your grasp. Yeah, you are chasing a guy that runs very very tight. He's playing really well, and then a guy comes by and he gets in front of him. Mm -hmm. Like you understand that if you hit that guy with your demo, for example. You go the three second cooldown, the guy gets a speed boost, the other guy gets to another jungle gym where he has two other pallets and another window on another shag. Blah, 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 do, blah. do you think and, this... And it's, it's over. Like, those 30 seconds that it's going to take you now to finish that guy that you were going for in the first place? Yeah. Uh, yeah you've lost that game. Like, you could, like, if they play well enough, I would argue it's not so simple like, oh, just ignore them. No, if they, if they play well enough, you're going to be... You're gonna be in trouble either way. This this links to gen speed though, doesn't it? This this links to the survivors mm -hmm. can literally throw themselves at you, yeah. so they can just do their objective because your objective takes so long. So this right. this is a bigger this is a bigger thing. Like this, I think this links to gen speed personally, because you're you're basically saying they are throwing the objective at you, and even when they throw the objective at you, you still don't have enough time. It, okay. Like, <laughs> no, what I'm trying to say, uh, we we could argue about that as well, mm -hmm. and. Obviously, they can only do that if they're already doing well. But this is a bit like chess, right? The objective mm -hmm. in chess is to capture the king. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can do things that are silly. You can sacrifice pieces for no reason. But mm -hmm. sometimes, if you sacrifice a piece that is worth a lot, but eventually gets you to capture the other, uh, your opponent's king, it's totally worth it, right? So... Yeah. <laughs> like, if they are willing and they get away with sacrificing their own health states and mm -hmm. giving themselves up so that they waste your time. Maybe one of them is like, yeah, chase me, chase me. And they take you to a corner of the map. You pick them up, you hook them, it takes you 30 seconds. And now the gents are, you know, uh, out of the all done. Mm -hmm. Like that's part of their skill as well. So when I think of like, oh, if we count hooks and there's many hooks, that always means the killer's doing well. I think that the survivors can, um, can force those hook stages to make you waste time. What happens, if, what... what happens if you were punished for being hooked? Um, who the, the the survivors? Yeah, I mean, as I say, just off the top of my head, as I'm listening, right. like, what, what happens if the killer gets rewarded for hooks and survivors get punished for hooks? Uh, wouldn't you say that Ardi is supposed to to happen because you eventually die? Do you no, want I mean, I mean, be... point, points wise, points wise. So oh, wait, you know, point, yeah. So you, so, so you can't just abuse it. You can't just be like, well, I know my objective is done in X time, so I can just run at you. Like, that, they'll that, actually that's the lose points that, for it. That's, that would actually reward really bad gameplay. Like, for example, you know that one of the emblems for survivors is the unbroken, right? Mm. And if you die very early, you get bronze. If you die later on, you get silver. If you go down once, you get uh, golden. And if you never go down, you get iridescent, the highest, right? Mm -hmm. You remember that. So, how do you feel about I think that's terrible. I think that if you never go down, that, that's really, really bad. That means that if three of your teammates die and you never went down, that means you never protected them. So, like, I, I think it's up to the killer to, yes, get multiple hooks to pressure the survivors and eventually get them killed. But mm -hmm. also, I think it's part of a skill in itself and gives them flexibility to be like, okay, um, I know that I don't need to do 12 hooks. I know I need to do uh, just a bare amount to get a player out of the game. And maybe the last person I kill, I've only hooked once. Or yeah. the last two people I kill, I've only hooked once before each, instead of, you know, going for the 12 hooks on everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of your skill as a killer to 
um, identify the weak spot in in your in the in the survivor's team and be like, oh yeah, this is the weakest player. I'm gonna get him out of the way, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna go for chases to him more than maybe the other guy that's really really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So w what happens if you balance the game around getting multiple hooks on everyone rather than killing people? And now the it turns out that getting those hooks on the other survivors is not so easy at all. And well, you, well, for... you, you can't just go for like the weak link in the chain. You actually have to chase everyone. Yeah, first they're just going back to the um, everyone's just like you know using their health states to protect other people, etc., etc. I mm -hmm. do agree, you know, there's a certain team skill to it. You know, the understanding mm -hmm. of who's and and the devs have actually added the uh, the hook counter, so you can do that easier. Um, but uh -huh. is it is it very interesting? Uh, what what is interesting for me? Like, is it is it very interesting gameplay? Something like that, like just using. Um, survivors as hook states. That, like, that, that's, just, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm telling you. Like sometimes, you know, I would have games where if I manage to get a survivor out of the way with one or two gens left, I can win that game and kill everyone and get a lot of points and maybe go on to the next tournament uh, stage or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But if I don't manage to get someone out of the game at some point, four survivors are inherently like at that level, it's very hard to control them, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna spread out. They're gonna take hits for each other. They're gonna, you know, get the exit gates done uh, the minute the, they are powered, etc., etc. So, like, they are very, very willing to go to extreme lengths and to give me many, many hooks to make sure that no one dies. And so, it, it, it's really funny. Like, you know, you you chase one guy and then you never see him again. And then his teammate comes in. Like, they they take but, turns but, taking your attention. And I think that's, as, as that that should be rewarded. You think that should be rewarded? I think I think it should. I, I think know. it shows that the survivors are protecting each other and they are managing their hook stages the same way you as a killer are. You yeah. don't just hook people like randomly. It's like okay, one hook. Okay, one hook. How many games have you been in where you're like, okay, dude, I've I have seven hooks mm -hmm. and somehow none of these guys are dead. What is going on? I've been dominating them. Mm -hmm. and none that, of them that, are dead. That usually is a survivor friends. Yeah. If if it's an efficient survivor friends, they'll usually right. do that. Yeah. They they they're basically. Um, they're basically misdirecting you into spending time on people that you probably shouldn't spend time on. Uh, because as we as we agree, survivors, if you let them, they can be very efficient and mm -hmm. they can get uh, things got very, uh, very get things done very quickly. So here's where you are supposed to exert pressure on their weakest link, which is maybe the guy that you've already hooked twice, and then they'll have to come in and take a hit, and then gameplay occurs. And I think kills are okay for that. I think that if in a tournament. Um, you hook a guy, then you hook another. Okay, they do jumps a bit quicker than you'd like. Now they do an exchange, and then you get a kill, and now you go for two. If, if in a tournament, you have to do something like that. Obviously, tournaments are extreme examples. And then you this end up This is very with extreme. Kids. This whole thing is yeah. a massively extreme example, to be fair. <laughs> like, this is like the top of the top. They are taking hits, etc., etc. So, yeah, like, versus but, but, very... Yeah, but but that's, that's something that you see in every game. How many games do you win? Because there's a Claudette in a corner with, uh, you know, with Urban Evasion that doesn't want to be chased. And thus, you just end up killing one of her teammates faster. I, I, she never, I, she's never taken, the, you know, you out for a spin and, you know, taking you on a long chase. This style of play where you have teammates um, taking hits from the teammates and going down from the teammates, I only experience when it's that really strong survivor friends where the gens are flying. Uh, you've got everyone doing as you say. Like, this isn't a common occurrence. Right, but you could, so you could argue is... the same. You, no, you, I also don't see many killers go for 12 hooks and, and play very well and, really? and exert pressure. Like, I, I actually go against a lot of killers going for loads of hooks. It's enjoyable. Like, if I didn't, it'd be a less enjoyable experience. Uh, what I'm trying I to say is that on, on one hand, you're saying, oh, I think killers should be, you know, going for many hooks and should be so, playing so in, a, in a way that, you know. You're basically uh, saying if you're not too good at looping, the killer should tunnel that person and kill them quick, right? I think that this one of the skills of the survivors is protecting, uh, working as a team and protecting each other. One of the things you don't do as a survivor is go down in the basement against a killer that can really hurt you. One of the things you don't do as a survivor is run the killer into your teammates. Like, the thing is, I get that and, that and would... one of the things you don't do as a survivor is, you know, hide the entire match and let one of your teammates just get, you know, get the tunnel early to death because no one's protecting, no one's helping them out, no one's taking the heat off that person. I get. So I, th I think that's part of the, the survivor's job. 
and yeah. I don't think we we need to be like okay, well, um, no, we need to change the gameplay. Uh, it needs to be hooks. It cannot be kills. Uh, if if, if you get a, a four kill because you kill someone early and the other survivors did not do a good job protecting them, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying the game, you know, oh, it's super easy to, uh, especially back with Moyes and stuff. I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying it can't be improved. But if you win because the survivors have bad team play and they didn't uh, waste your time enough as a team and one of them just took the blunt of your of your chases and died early, that's on them Okay. as well. I, 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 get, I get that killing someone off really early in the game of a four versus one will make it easier for you as killer. I get that. But you're essentially just saying that killers should look for the weakest person and tunnel them and get them killed. So it's easier for you. Which I don't think is very interesting or fun. What would you think happen in a in a different system um, that would change this? What what prioritizing what hooks? Happen? Wouldn't you say <laughs> that you would be encouraging killers to just get as many hooks as possible and make sure that people are being tunneled as quickly as possible? Because there's nothing you, you're saying that okay, the um, there's gonna be a, a reason not to camp because there won't be progress. On, on hooks if the killer's nearby but what is the incentive not to immediately tunnel that person again and just get them hooks early you mean just stop in there waiting on a person who's not regressing on a gen um uh, oh, uh, sorry not, not regressing on the hook sorry because are you talking like are you talking about the example where i was saying uh if you were to incentivize killers going for hooks uh, you'd, you know, push them away from uh, the hook somehow with the gen, and you wouldn't keep them at the hook because, you know, there's no reason for the be there. Are you talking about that thing? Uh, well, it's it's hard because I, I still, you know, we still don't have a system that really encourages you to go for hooks. For sure, but we should. That I think that'll be healthy. For the, my literal stance, once again, is mm -hmm. that would be a healthier direction for the game, pushing in that direction, pushing in a direction where the killers want to go for multiple chases. You don't need to tunnel anyone. You don't need to look for the weakest link. You don't need to like get someone out of the game instantly because that's insanely unfun for that one person. Um, mm -hmm. And to encourage them going for multiple hooks uh, and multiple chases and the whole gameplay isn't how quickly you can get someone out of the game. It isn't who can be slugged in this out position here. It isn't who can be dead zoned here where there's no gameplay. It's how well you do in chase versus how well they do in chase. And dependent on how well you've done and they've done will dictate how the game goes. That's how it should be. And it isn't that way, obviously. But that would be the healthiest direction for the game. Will it get to that direction? I don't know. But that is the healthiest direction for the game. And it's the most interesting. If I'm a spectator, I don't know anything about this game. I come in, I see multiple killers going for multiple chases against multiple mines, doing multiple mine games and all this kind of stuff. That's interesting. If I go and see uh, something where there's a guy who's staying near a hook, you know, this person gets off the hook, he follows him, hits him down in a dead zone, puts him back on a hook, follows him again, puts him down at a dead zone, puts him back on the hook, four gens are done, walks, finds someone else, no heads them, puts them on a hook, camps there. It's boring. I, uh, I, I think what, what I'm having difficulty here is, like, first of all, I don't disagree. More chases, more, you know, the, more fun, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think my point is that that's not the only way for the game to work. And there's other ways and they're also valid if i if you're playing trapper and you want to spend a minute setting up traps because you think that that's going to help you snowball later that's not very you know hook to hook chase to chase but it's still it's still valid and it's you can still do it and you can still if you if we're you know if we're not you, you are, you're talking about getting like one position and just putting all traps there and just waiting for everyone to not, not, nece not necessarily okay. but this is something that different people and d different and different killers will do sometimes you're not playing a build that's made to prolong the game forever you just have an end game build and you just want to use blood warden to maybe get a couple kills at the end maybe you're playing trapper and you want to set some traps at the start and you don't have time to go for for like 10 good chases because you're of the gems, gonna go... yeah. well yeah but that that's still okay you're still gonna get four kills if you play your cards right and that's not any less uh, valid is is what I'm getting at. If you mm. want to go that, if you want to go that playstyle, the survivors have again their their own way to counter it. They're yeah. they're letting you set up, and they they're doing many gens at the start. They'll knock out two or three gens just like that. But then if they don't play carefully for the rest of the game, they might find themselves in a very quick turn of events, and it's what makes the game kind of exciting. You know, 
This is not one of it's not one of those uh, like one of those sports where one team is winning by so many points. You know, the halfway through the match is like okay, I can stop watching. I know how it's gonna end. In this game, the survivors are never too far from making one or two mistakes that would immediately um, screw them over, right? For like almost every killer. And that threat, I think, is a good thing. It keeps it keeps things spicy. It keeps things interesting. It gives you um, hope for a second chance if you had a bad start of the game. And if we're if we're gonna balance the game around having multiple chases, like I feel like Hunter's mains are gonna be happy. Uh, mm -hmm. Nurse mains are gonna be happy. I think most uh, will. Light mains are gonna be happy, but like set set up characters probably would. Like as you said, Trapper and Hag, they're more the yeah. campy, sluggy, stay at one area kind of characters, right? Okay. So they they would uh be weaker in this in this kind of would they hmm you, you don't need to just stay in one area with trapper i do find well, that i'm the not, most, I'm not, the most I'm not boring. even saying i'm not even saying i, I like, do i do find I'm that not the, even tie, the most... i'm not even tying it to one area i'm just no no it, I'm, like... ju I'm just trying to think like when i do go against a trap who's doing that i do find that a very boring uh strategy i get it i do get mm -hmm. it you know free gen loads of traps around the free gens pretty much mm -hmm. every loop has a trap now but that's kind of boring again, I think. I don't think that's as interesting as going around the map planting traps and thinking of like, oh, let's push him this way. Let's, I, I, let's, I get, I get let's that you find him boring trap. and it's let's not, it's not your place now. Mm -hmm. But do you think that if someone wants to play like that and they want to have an end game build with like Bitter Murmur, uh, Noed, like do you think they should just not be able to do that? Don't you think mm -hmm. that the fact that they can still get four kills and- I think everyone still... should be able to play the way they want to play. Definitely, but I think skill should be rewarded more than advantage. I've said I said this today. I think skill should be rewarded more than advantage. And what I mean can by you, that can is, you, can you like elaborate on that? Because yeah, I, like I bring a like... noed, bring a noed. Like you know, that's an advantage, not skill. You bring noed, and now all of a sudden you're faster after you know all the gens done, and then you down someone. Bring in a key, you know, all of a sudden you were losing, and now you jump into uh, a hatch. Uh, staying at free gens. Um, it's not very skillful, but it's a bit of an advantage, right? right? You're just staying at one spot. You're making dead zones everywhere. You just I'm, stay I'm gonna, at these three places. You, I'm gonna give I, you. I, I like, like the idea of skill over advantage a lot more. Like even waiting for someone to die on a hook, that's giving you an advantage. It's not skillful, though, is it? But that that doesn't go in line with your point, though, because let's what say point? that I'm an insanely good huntress, right? Mm -hmm. And midway through the match, I have a guy on the hook. I land four or five hatches in a row, like the craziest hatches you've ever seen, and I down the entire team. That's skill. I'm, I'm insane at Hunters. Like, I have so many hours on her, and I just show you my skill in every one of those hatches, and I down everybody. That's fair but enough. That's not the you, that, no, no, that's fair enough. You're still going for hooks. They just completely just all went down for some reason that quick. Like, right, exactly. you, you, you didn't try to go for the slug. You, you saw all of them right next to you. If they do that, that's fair enough. Going for hooks basically is a mentality of... I want to get loads of hooks. It isn't, I'm going to ignore all of these people in front of me. Like, it's it's a mentality of you're not trying to kill. You're trying to go for loads of hooks. The kills are the byproduct of going for loads of hooks. That's that's literally it. Like, it's you can capitalize on, on some really stupid moment, of course. You're not just going to ignore it. But you're not aiming to do that. You're not aiming to negate this massive objective. You're not aiming to get them out of the game ASAP. Well... You, maybe you're not, but maybe I am. Maybe I am placing six traps all around the map because I want all the survivors to step on them at the right time and, you know, give me the win. And I think that that is a risk and reward that I can take and the survivors can take and they can play around it and I can try to make it work and they can try to make it not work. And that's valid. So if I, you... I could definitely see, like, with the trapper thing, why you would think, you know, kills over hooks is uh, interesting because... With a trapper, you might be able to get four people in hooks and then just pick uh, four people in traps and then just pick them all up. But that doesn't work with all killers. With a lot of killers, you'd have to play very lame to go for kills over hooks. Like if you didn't care about how many hooks you had, you wanted mm -hmm. people out of the game. That's tunneling. It's face camping. It's slugging. It's all the boring part of the game. But would you like if I were to summarize my point real quick, mm -hmm. and you try to find the biggest flaw there is in it, is that to me the survivors have tools and the responsibility to make sure they don't all die too quickly that they don't all get slugged that they don't that they don't have one of their teammates suddenly you know um tunneled early and because of that i think kills is a fair way to assess you know more or less how you did in a game 
and there are different playstyles, and you don't necessarily get, need to get a lot of hooks um, to do well in a match. Um, if we move towards a a balance uh, overall for the game that's just about hooks, you're killing a bunch of different playstyles, and it's all going to be about you know um, they all shortening about chases though. artificially as much as you can. And, and getting the hooks in and not necessarily having a, a larger plan or planning ahead or taking care of which survivors you're going to try to eliminate. You, you, and, know, you, know. you know when you play Survivor? Mm -hmm. You want, you, it's just the chase. Like, it, especially when you've played this game a lot, right. the chase is the entertainment. That's what's fun. So I don't know. I, I can't agree with wanting a killer to tunnel me. <laughs> like I, I, I just can't because it's just not fun. It's really annoying. Let's say if you're on a hook, I get it. It makes it easier for the killer. I 100% get it. And I 100% know why people do it in tournament, which I said, mm -hmm. the gens go too quick or maybe map size or it's something to do with the survivor's obje objective is way quicker than the killers. It gives killers less uh, confidence that like they can go for loads of chases. So they do that. I completely get it. What I'm saying is it's not fun. I don't think it's very fun. I don't think it's a healthy way or a healthy direction for the game personally, right? Um, I want to go for multiple chases and I want killers to believe that they go for multiple chases. And this leads to something else as well. If you go for kills um, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, this person's getting two kills, this is three kills, this is four kills, etc., etc., the devs aren't ever going to address tiles or map size or gen speed because they're going to be like, well, these guys are killing. Oh, they're negating, like, you know, half of the game, all the hooks, but they're killing. So we don't need to address it. So all you're going to see is when there's really good survivors, a really good killer, the killer has to play lame because he cannot compete in a fun way against them people. And it'll never be addressed because we're ignoring it. All right. So I'm going to go over your point to, because I think there's a flaw to it. And sure. you tell me if I'm straw mining or if, or if maybe I'm, misunder I'm misinterpreting. Sure. The fun part of the game for survivors is to be chased by the killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, the killer does not often commit to as many chases as he could because the generators are, they can be done very quickly. Also, tiles, map size, things like that. Like I okay. love the TL, for example. I think the TL is the best design mm -hmm. tile. I love it. I, I, I just love the design of it. So if, if, if every kind of loop had that kind of like style, that idea, It'd be fucking uh, fantastic. I would absolutely love it. But go on. And it would be uh, fair for both Killer and Survivor. I think a TL is very fair for both. No, no this Ball bamboozle. Ball bamboozle. Bamboozle makes it very unfair. <laughs> it gets really <laughs> in, in killer favor. Okay, no, 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 no disagreements there. But how do you allow the killer to go on more chases and make that happen more without making the other survivors, the three that are not being chased, not have to hold them one for longer? Because if you're telling me that, oh, I want to be, you know, I want to be chased a lot in a game, uh, doing gens is not, it's not the fun part, it's the boring part. But we would have to, we would have to make gen times long, um, gen times longer to compensate for that. Or something. You think that we could or just uh, get away with making, you know, shrinking maps. I feel, longer. I feel if people went for hooks, hooks were the incentive, etc., etc. the devs will be able to have a different kind of look at the game, a different idea, and then they could start addressing, you know, as I said, the gen timings. It don't need to be just gen timings. Maybe it's another objective for the survivors to do. It, it, it's just like, it'd it just be a, a nicer direction, as I said. Like, I, I don't know how else to say it, really, because I'm, I'm basically just saying the same thing now. Like... No, that's, that's totally fair. Uh, the one thing where I think you and I... Because so far, I I don't uh, I don't necessarily disagree with uh, much of what you're saying, really. Uh, I do believe that you know hooks shouldn't be the end uh, end game goal. I think the survivors should uh, have their their own responsibility in preventing that. But I don't I don't disagree with uh, more chases being better than just someone face camping and non interactive gameplay. But the thing that I think we're not going to see eye to eye is how you feel about 4K streaks and kill challenges and what they do for the game. Mm. Because some time ago you made a tweet, and from what I've seen in your streams, like this is, this is an opinion that you've um, uh, expressed a few times. Yeah. You don't think they're healthy for the game? No. Uh, could you tell me why? Um, I, I said that tweet because randomly I just went on forums, and they always there's a lot of people who use these 4K streaks as a reason how the game is balanced or in the killer's favor 
when they're not understanding how these 4K streaks are done. A lot of the time they're done by, uh, you know, killing people quick, et cetera, et cetera. Like they're not, they're not understanding that this is just getting, and it isn't in 4K, it's uh, 3K sometimes or, or whatever K. Like it depends yeah. what they like say is a win. Like escapes in a row, for example, mm -hmm. like getting an escape in a row would bring in a key and someone DC in. Like it, it, it's, it's quite, um, what I was to say, it, it's, um, it misrepresents what, what a win is, I feel. I, I really do. And I feel people use it uh, to, I don't know, they, they, they use it to kind of say that everything's fine, I guess. I guess to say this game's in a good state, or maybe even the killers have power, because obviously you can't do this in a row, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of them, personally. I get why do people you think, do it. Do you think that's more fault of the creators that do these challenges? Because they don't acknowledge that there's something wrong with the game and they're doing that. Like for example, they don't say, "Oh well, I got many escapes." In I honestly, I honestly. Or do don't... you think it's, or do you think it's the fault of the person that sees that and misunderstands it and tries to align that with their own points? Well, I don't know, uh, like what the creator or whatever is thinking when they are doing the foreman. Like I don't know what their motive for it is. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't know with with that. Like. It depends what the motive is. Do, are they doing it because they want to challenge? Are they doing it because they just want people to see that they've got this number near the name? Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the, the motive would be. Um, regarding someone on a forum saying that, mm, I, I mean, it's ignorance, isn't it? Like, they don't have as much information on the game, so they use someone who has, and that someone is winning a lot. So I guess it, it's really hard to say who's who's at fault there. Uh, I guess a bit of both, like the fault is saying I can 50 wins, the win part is the, is the kind of the misleading thing, 50 wins, because it's in, it's like an in-house win, it's not an actual win, because the only thing that we can go off a win is the emblem system, which already is a mess, right, so it's all, all a massive And the, and the developers themselves are retiring it, basically, out of matchmaking. Right? Yeah, the matchmaking. I don't know what the matchmaking thing is because it's all going to be hidden. I I, I genuinely don't know no, how. No, yeah, no, we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I I think I think it confuses people. I think it confuses people even more than people are confused already with the game. It just muddies everything, especially saying wins. Like if it was like fifty three Ks or fifty four Ks or whatever, that makes sense. Yeah. But say the wins part is a thing what I think misleads, and also. Like maybe escapes in a row. I feel that misleads uh, in the sense that people think escape is a win because it's almost like mm -hmm. it's almost like it, it's um what's the, what's the word? It's suggested, right? It, it's it's almost mm -hmm. like that must be it. Yeah, it goes. It, imp it's the implication implies. That... Yeah, yeah, the implication. That's the one. Yeah. So I, that that's why I think it's unhealthy. Uh, it's not the worst ever thing in the world. There's other unhealthy things, but yeah, uh, that's that's why I think it is. 100%. Well, it, it might not be the worst thing in the world, but it's probably no, what not. got me to do this response and do this because mm -hmm. um, I know many people that have done this mm -hmm. and I disagree or agree more or less with the rules and what each person considers a win. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I'm like, okay, I wouldn't go just for four kids because I think it's boring. Or, you know, I can, I can have my disagreements, but I think that what you're doing by saying that is just as harmful, if not more harmful, because it's kind of dismissive to the effort that these people make uh, to the efforts that these people put into their own challenges, whatever the, mm. they might be, right? And Maybe. it's like we're infighting between each other because the game is not perfect. And instead of like uniting efforts perhaps and figuring out, okay, why can this guy do this? Or why can the skill, you know, pull this uh, challenge off? Instead of like talking about that, we're at each other's throats. And that I think is just sad. It's just like, why are we doing this? No. Um, I don't think uh, being able to win many times in a row when you have uh, like the amount of hours that some of these people do uh, and that we do because you have got like what 6,000 hours in the game now but, but also but but also just yeah. just kind of uh, to talk about this you know you must mm -hmm. right and all right. the people who have played this game a lot know that the only way you get on win streaks is going against bad survivors so it's... even even in that sense it's just I, right. I don't I just don't get the point like I know that if I go against a really strong four man, I'm not gonna right. get three of them or four of them or whatever. Like you have to just get a streak of just not very good survivors. Like you know that, right? 
uh, okay, yeah, sure. And that's but do, why well, I do, you, do you, do you, that, do you? Yeah, but that's, th that's so why I sometimes play in tournaments and I scrimmage against good survivors. And yeah. I, I, I'm very down to earth understanding mm -hmm. That okay, if you're gonna play in a tournament, you're gonna be lucky if you tie. So, so you're this is very this... lucky if you win, and it's it wouldn't be crazy at all if you lost. Like, mm -hmm. so this is why my this is why my position once again is they're, they're quite misleading, because it's yes, not, it's, not mis the, it's not misleading but, but, about the game's balance at all though. Like it has but, nothing but, to do with, with but, the game balance. The reason why we can do these like fifty streaks, so there's people who are like a fucking three hundred. Um, the reason people can do them is because mm -hmm. the caliber of survivors they're going against isn't that high. As soon as you go against a high caliber, boom, streak gone. So it, it, in my eyes, it's kind of meaningless. It's just like a, a number, which is like, oh, you know, that's cool. That person got 300 wins in her or whatever. But it, it's because right. you didn't go against people who was really, really good at the game. And I'm not but saying that, like... That, 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 that's exactly what you think and exactly why you're just dismissive of it. But you're not considering all the other things. The fact that, for example, some of these streaks are done and they're very, very high numbers. They played 100 matches where they haven't made a single game ending mistake. You know this as well as I do. Sometimes yeah, you can play very, very well against really bad survivors, like the worst survivors you've ever seen in your life. You make one mistake and you lose. And, you know, some of these streaks are done with extra conditions. I don't play, I play without add-ons for mine, for example, which makes it difficult. And I understand like half my games, I'm like, okay, I didn't get that because I don't have an add-on. And there is a consistency um, to getting something done in a row. And there is a learning curve there's definitely and consistency, have, but and, but and also there's a bit like of luck. You, you're saying, luck. oh, they just win by killing quickly. How do you think you kill quickly if you're not good at the game consistently against a but like even uh, if they're not like t tournament level survivors? Well, you've you've, you've met a tangent. As I said, the thing we we're talking about is, uh, and I'm sure you do know because you you've played a lot, and everyone who's got a lot of hours understands that the especially now as well because there's more new players the the ranks are so watered down like this is probably up there with the easiest it's been i think with survivors mm -hmm. and the reason you get on the streaks is because you don't go against that really really high caliber one like say one really really like oracle or whatever right if they just went against when you were doing one of these streaks they just take yeah. it even yeah. even if you are really good at killer like i'm not saying you're not good at killer or anything i'm just saying the survivors have the control, and you know that. The survivors have the control because of the objective speed, which, you know, once again, tangent, 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 but... Okay, but, like, consider consider the, the following, then. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're back to your original statement that 4K streaks, etc., etc., they kind of misrepresent the state of the game. Yeah. Am I, am I correct in that? They, they misrepresent that the killer is uh, stronger than survivor, yes. <laughs> Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. That's fine. Because, like, there, like you can, we can look at other games that are not asymmetrical, that are a lot more balanced. You can go on, like, CSGO pros that mm -hmm. play against average players, and they go on massive winning streaks. Mm -hmm. Massive winning streaks. And we yeah. know that game is, like, as close to balance as it gets. Uh, the other day I was watching Hikaru Nakamura, which is, like, a top chess player, and he has this challenge, right, where he plays random people. Not even, not even like, he's, like, incredibly good, right? But not even like random bad people, random really good players with this bogus opening, this really stupid strategy. And he's on like a 300 win and like 20 loss uh, record. Right. And why, did, why, does he, why does he get that? Because he's incredibly good and he has like many more hours than the average player he's playing against. Yeah. And because he has a deep understanding and because he's basically um, That's not like the very, very top percentage. So when he plays against play average or close to average players, he can go and do that. Right, right. And that doesn't mean that chess is imbalanced because you know it's the same pieces. No, 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 this, it's generally this, this, a balanced game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't say I, that these that, streaks that short imbalance. Go on. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really make too much sense. Um, what I'm saying is in uh, DVD is the reason because it's so imbalanced. DVD. Uh, the reason why you can go for the the big streaks is because the survivor's caliber because it's so f favorable for the survivor. As we can see when you do play at the higher level, the gens fly, etc., etc. Uh, what you were saying is you were just, just talking about people who are generally very good, like really, really good at a quite balanced game. And they and they can achieve similar things to what you can do in this game if you also have in a lot of hours. Dependent on the survivors you go against, yes. Well, but like, here's the thing. Do you there's think... No, there's, there's no do, only no, no, survivor. No, no. Okay. Do, do, yeah, you, do you genuinely think that you could win four-man any caliber team survivor with any if killer? I w if I was going against survivors in my hours... 
with like the same hours as me, like four survivors, not necessarily even a survivor friends that had the same hours. I'd be lucky to have five wins in a row. Like, yeah, that's that what I mean. That's very exactly very what I'm on about then. You're agreeing with it. This is what I mean. Like it, it's all about not getting them people. This is what I'm saying. All right, so what, what, what should I do? Uh, should I name my streaks? Uh, 50 wins well, in a row, but third. a win is 3k and Hajj, but also I have 6,000 hours in the game or close, <laughs> and my average opponent only had 752, I no, calculated. No. Uh, like, I like, mean, if how, you... It, how do I try, I'm not, like, I'm, make it easy? I'm not, I'm not going to say, like, how you title it. I'm, I, like, I do think it's basically the insane wins, but if I was doing, like, a, a 3k in a row or 4k mm -hmm. in a row, I'd just call it that. I'd just say 3k's in a row or 4k's in a row. That's okay, what I no, call that, it. That, that, I think it's... That is a fair point that I could totally, you know, agree to disagree or, yeah, or concede nice. the point. That's that's fine. Like, that is just, like, we're talking like semantics, basically. We don't we don't disagree with the fact that if you play against really good players, um, obviously it's going to be harder. And yeah, now the question, well, impossible, I impossible, honestly. It, it I, is, would, it, I, I wouldn't say impossible because I see good survivors play against good killers. They're going to have to And I to see like... good killers play against good survivors. And I don't see, oh my god, it's always one side of survivors are always taking the the win home. I don't see it that way. Mm, it's I don't I don't see it that way, generally. And and many of the times where you think that is probably because I don't know, you're you're maybe holding back. You're playing a weak killer, um, against survivors bringing the Remember this is with things. every killer. This is with every killer. Like you can possibly do it with nurse, spirit, things oh. like that. We're talking about what? every killer. Like uh, I don't know, I man. Mean that there's that, so that, much that, there's so much downtime fair. with some of the killers like you have so much downtime with some of the killers that like they could do two gens before you even start your first chase and i think i think this segues nicely then into the mmr system mm -hmm. would you be happy then if an mmr system comes around and now you're paired against people that have around your hours which is going to be hard because it's going to mm. be like five of them right this is what i'm on about like, okay. so, so this is what I'm scared about. And this is what kind of got me into this. Why, why, this... why are you scared about it? Shouldn't that be great? Well, let me say, uh, this is what got me into kind of thinking this way and talking about these things and these tweets and stuff. Because I'm thinking, um, if I'm going against people with the same knowledge, the same understanding of the game, it's literally just going to be face camping, slugging, one hooking, only going for dead zones, not going for any chases. Like, it'll be a very uninteresting uh, game for me. Mm -hmm. mm, that's what I'm scared about because I don't think skill is actually the skill of the chase I think skill is gen efficiency and one hooking which I don't th see as skill I see it as advantage as I said I, I don't know if I necessarily uh, like I agree also that, uh, what, that at thing, the highest what, level it all just dumps down it kind of to... does have you not seen like, torn like I, tournament no just listen I, I, just, I, just I listen one uh, true like if, if I'm completely honest and you allow me to be blunt I okay. have a feeling that you've just seen some tournaments that just made you think of of tournaments like that possibly and but they, 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 they were one i saw idea. They, they were one i saw um a month ago or something like this um oh. and their strategy as the survivors were to put the pallet down instantly and free other people just do gens that was the strategy just put the pallet down instantly don't so. even like attempt to go for like another loop around it just put it down instantly you just play it mega safe. Yeah, just play it ultra safe. Court, and and well, eventually, you know, he'll go down, but then they've, they've lost three gens. Yeah. So it's already, like, that's like, what is that, 6% of the objective pretty much done already? Yeah, I, I, I understand the point, but I feel like if we're going to discuss it like this, like, we're already acknowledging that it's not so much about, like, in, in, that, in that situation, it doesn't matter where it's hook skills. I think it's most about, okay, this map is busted. Well, it does. It does. Because Why? it matters, because the devs aren't addressing this because they're looking at kills. This is the point I'm talking about. If everyone just went for hooks, then the, the data the devs got would be mm -hmm. clearer to what the game is. I think the devs' data, what they get, isn't very clear to what the game is because well, people then, negate what the objective. With, what would happen with the hundreds and hundreds of games that happen all the time where survivors just keep up on hook? Would that count as a three hook? What, ha what would happen in the games where survivors disconnect? What would happen in the games where survivors let someone reach stage two by not even going and bothering? What would happen what do you mean? What, if wait, you what, kill what, yourself on hook? What do you mean by that? What would happen? Um, what I'm saying is your 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 argument here is that if we look at the statistics about hooks, that would probably paint a clearer picture 
about how good a game is mm -hmm. and what we should balance towards. Mm -hmm. And then kill himself on the hook would show how many hooks they got. It'd be the same thing. Like, say say if they didn't kill themselves on the hook and they played really well and you got four hooks, would be the same as you four hooking them, you get four hooks. Now, one of them shows zero kills and one of them shows four kills. The four kills were just as bad as the zero kills one. But the devs now can see that it was only that amount of hooks. I, I, only, I, I don't think this will actually happen anyway. I just think it would be a healthier way of looking at the game. The devs have already told us, I think on stream, that their MMR system is not going to be just based on kills. They said that they tested a system like that. Mm -hmm. That was oh yeah, <laughs> and it didn't work. That's what I mean. And it, it just did not work. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. It's not good data to use. So that 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 I don't think surprises anyone. No, no, no. because because you can you can legit have a very good game and have one kill mm -hmm. after hooking many people and having many chases, and you can also have like a horrible game and you just hook one guy and camp him. Uh, like I I, I, am, I understand that, mm -hmm. but there's also the fact that you cannot escape. And it's that survivors control how many hooks you get. They just control it. If if they do not, uh, if they do not allow themselves to be hooked multiple times, by not like uh, allowing you to engage different survivors, uh, like I, I said before, you're not gonna get those hooks. So it's also based on what they give you. It's something they, they, you cannot you cannot control as a killer. There will be extremes in both sides, but I think the extremes to the hook side won't be as bad as the extremes to the kill side. I think the kill side will be way more misleading than the hook side. Like, they, yeah, there will be some kind of abuses they'll be able to do, but then you can work on them anyway. It still, it, you, it, my mind still hasn't changed that I think hooks of like going for hooks, the killer wanting to go for as many hooks as possible is healthy for the game. Like, my mind still hasn't really changed on that. And that's fine, you know, like, we can uh, agree to disagree on that. I have no problem agreeing to disagree on stuff. But you haven't, you haven't given me... I don't think my a... disagreement with you is that a killer going for multiple chases is bad. I think my disagreement with you is that it's not the only way a killer can win. I think that, you know, if you manage to down all four survivors because they misplayed it, that's as valid as a 12 foot game. And my disagreement also is that if you have that kind of playstyle, and you want to do 50 wins in a row like I do, or, you know, whatever other 4K challenge that some other people do, even if I don't personally, like, like it or love it or I agree with all the rules, that that's also a valid way to, to deal with the game. And that counting hooks is just not necessarily, like, not the, really. it's the, not the, the solution hooks. to this. It's not really counting but... hooks. It's, it's incentivizing the killer to want more hooks. It doesn't matter if you get, like... 10 hooks, 9 hooks, 8 hooks. It matters about incentivizing the killer to want hooks over kills. That's that's and always my that's that's my position. That that's literally it. And, and how do we like honestly if we agree to that and I'm 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 again we're agreeing on that how, how exactly do we do it map wise? What are, what are our best ideas if we put them together as a community mm -hmm. to, to push this? Is it just about ma trying to change the, the devs' minds about how they collect data so that they see it themselves? Is it about I, pushing I a think, certain idea? I, th I think it'd be about incentivizing healthy gameplay, incentivizing the killer not to slug camp tunnel, incentivizing the you know survivors to go for hooks, um, you know, but I mean, they've already got the incentive to go for hooks, so I guess they've already got that. It, it's just trying to make it so you don't have these killers who, because you like if right. So if MMR does work, right, and I genuinely go against people who understand the game as I do, this game will be very boring. I don't think MMR will completely work. I don't think I will go against like you know the tournament, like the five gens in four minutes and one. Uh, what is it? One hook into nowhere, and you know like, all we, that kind we, of we stuff. We have to remember that those are still a very minuscule part of the of, of the average player base, right? Yeah, but if MMR is on and with our hours, like we'll be we'll be high MMR with our hours, man. Compared to like people who have started like a hundred hours ago and stuff, so right. we'll we'll be bunched in with a lot of that, one hundred percent. Like, I'm I'm I don't think it'll be very fun. Is what I'm saying. Um, I don't think they'll get it right, though. I don't think they will actually get an MMR where it judges, you know, how good your skill is compared to how, how good someone else is. But you never know. You never know. Um, regarding the hook incentive and all that kind of stuff, uh, it would be awesome if we, as a community, could kind of grab that concept and try and work out how to incentivize uh, killers to go for chases, um, you know, work on the tiles, work on the map size, all that kind of stuff, because I think it would push the